Hi, I'm Craig Tyriak, the Vice President of Product Management at Scale Computing. In this video, we will be demonstrating the Scale Computing Platform, or SC Platform. This is an IT infrastructure solution that combines everything you need for running your workloads with maximum uptime while minimizing operational overhead, whether you're deploying to a data center, a branch office, or even distributed edge locations. SE Platform is really made up of two distinct pieces of software, software that work together seamlessly. On, on one side, you have SE Hypercore, which is our hyperconverged software stack that combines virtualization, server storage, disaster recovery, and backup into an appliance-like experience for running your workloads on-premises. And on the other side, you have SE Fleet Manager, which is a really powerful cloud-based fleet management tool for the orchestration and management of your fleet of Hypercore-based clusters, whether that's one or 10,000. And in today's video, you'll notice a few things. We'll highlight simplicity, we'll highlight availability, and we'll highlight scalability. For simplicity, let's first start by logging into Fleet Manager. Here I've pointed my browser to fleet.scalecomputing.com and I'm going to log in with Google. And once logged in, I'm presented with a dashboard that shows me my entire fleet and the current health of that fleet. But I'm gonna pass over this to go to the clusters tab to show you the experience of zero touch provisioning. The very first time you interact with Hypercore and Fleet Manager, it's going to be to add a new cluster into your environment. You have it, you've, you've just ordered a cluster, you're, you've received your credentials to log into Fleet Manager for the first time. And this is where you'll stage your cluster. So I'm gonna create a, a name, I'll give it a net mask, give it a gateway. Backplane net mask, I'll leave the same. And then finally add a node. And whether you're adding a single node or whether you're adding multiple nodes, the process is the same. You simply define what you need for this workload in this environment with the backplane and LAN IP. And then we pre-populate it with the software license. Now there is a separate demonstration that I would welcome you to go to around zero touch provisioning. We won't go through the entire process here. The concept though is that you've staged the cluster so that somebody can plug in the networking, plug in the power, and you don't have to have IT resources with that expertise on premises to install the cluster. Once they are installed, I'll switch over to my deployed tab and you'll see that I've, I've narrowed it down to my scale lab. So the scale lab is actually running on three nodes that you can see here that each have a single drive, single CPU with their relative core counts here. And this is based on a small form factor that we call the HE150 series. And whether it's based on this or whether you're based on a 1U or 2U rack mount SC hardware that we've certified, the experience is gonna be the same. So you, you can kind of ignore the hardware for the purposes of today's demonstration. Down below, you'll see the running workloads that I have in this environment, where I'm actually going to click over into the Hypercore user interface. So you'll see that I've pointed my browser to one of the IPs of this cluster just by clicking through within Fleet Manager. And I'm presented with this cluster in its entirety. Now that initialization process that I talked about when you've staged a cluster, one of the things that it does is it initializes every node in the cluster and then it initializes the cluster itself. And that initialization process pulls together the storage so that you can do things like tolerate a node failure or tolerate a drive failure. It allows you to do things like live make, migrate a virtual machine from one node to another. And that underlying shared storage that we call Scribe, Scale Computing Reliable Independent Block Engine, is what powers that. Now I thought to highlight the simplicity, we go on from there to create a new workload. And I'll give it a name and a description here. I can set up tags, which is just a logical grouping within the user interface. We primarily see people that are running Windows and Linux variants. And of course, we per include performance drivers for those workloads. You select the boot type, however many CPUs this requires, the memory footprint. In this Windows VM, this would be my C drive. And of course, I can add additional drives here. And all the drives you add are thinly provisioned. And then I simply point to the boot ISO and click Create. And that's really it. I didn't have to worry about the underlying storage. There's not a lot of complexity in the process. And this, of course, while I'm doing it manually in the user interface, could also be done through the REST API. It could also be done through our Red Hat Ansible um, certified uh, collection that we have out there as well, if you want to interact with the clusters across your fleet as code. Now, I have this virtual machine that's currently running on node three in the system. You can see it's loading up Windows. Of course, I'd mentioned live migration. We make use of live migration functionality to do things like rolling updates. So as a new update comes out, we update everything from the BIOS and the firmware up through that scribe storage layer, 
our orchestration and manage layer that we call AIM as well, really everything in the entire stack. And to do that, we migrate VMs off the first node, we update that entire stack, and then we migrate the VMs back. If we have to reboot or restart a node in the process, we'll do that. And once things are back up and nominal, that's when we rejoin the cluster and you know, kind of have those workloads migrate around as needed. If you start to exhaust resources, and you can see the dials at the very top of the hypercore user interface, which would indicate when you start to reach maximum thresholds for CPU or RAM or disk, all you have to do to scale out the environment is to add additional nodes. And that can be done in a very similar process to what we talked about for the initialization of the cluster. You simply initialize a new node, and that initialization process will aggregate the storage of that new node in with the existing storage of the cluster. That new storage doesn't necessarily have to match. So here I'm running my HE150 cluster all with NVMe uh, SSDs within it. You can mix and match between drive types. You can mix and, mix and match between drive sizes. Uh, you can mix and match between generations of the CPU. There's a lot of flexibility in that mix and match scale out nature of this, this infrastructure. And, and because of that, it's a really powerful tool because you can buy what you need today knowing that you can just add resources down the road as your environment changes. So that's simplicity. We've also briefly touched on the scalability within the scale out nature of an individual cluster. We'll talk about scalability in terms of management here in a minute. But first, I thought I'd show off availability and what it's like to experience a node failure. So here, I've actually pulled the power on one of my nodes in this three node system, which I believe is the third node. I briefly mentioned as I was talking about the update process, uh, uh, orchestration and management engine that we call AIM. That's Autonomous Infrastructure Management Engine. It's really an AI ops functionality that's built into Hypercore that allows us to run in a really autonomous environments, knowing that the system has all the intelligence it needs to run there locally. So uh, as that VM was starting up, I didn't mention this, but one of the things it's looking at is the available resources at that point in time. It can pick and, and place that workload wherever it needs to run. Obviously, it's also monitoring thousands of conditions related to things like can it communicate on the backplane for all of the nodes in the system? If it can't, you'll start to see conditions that are set within the environment that say, I can no longer reach this node. As a result, data redundancy is degraded because that scribe storage layer is, is really creating two blocks of data. Placing those blocks in different failure groups is what allows us to tolerate node failures. And this is the first indication that we cannot tolerate another node failure. We have data redundancy degraded here on that third node. Now. What you'll also notice is that as the administrator, I don't necessarily have to worry about running to the data center to restart those workloads. That happens automatically as part of this process of data redundancy being degraded, the node being marked as out, and you'll see it go offline as it goes through the stages, uh, and it's not some kind of transient error where it's not just able to communicate on the back claim. Now, when we talk about the availability of this, of course, it's, it's all around those workloads coming back online. Through that process, as an administrator, obviously, you'll see those alerts populate here within the user interface of Hypercore. You'll also see them through Syslog. If you have that set up, you'll see them through the email alerts that can come directly from the system itself. And then, of course, when you pair that with Fleet Manager, you'll start to see those populate in Fleet Manager as well. All the conditions that you see in Hypercore propagate up to that. So here you've noticed my, my VM's back up and running. Life is good in terms of the users able to connect into this workload and continue operations at this site. Meanwhile, I've received the notifications that allow me as administrator to take action. So here, this is propagating up to Fleet Manager. And this is really the last piece of what I call scalability because the scalability within a cluster is very important to match the resources of the workloads that you have there on premises, but scalability is also about management at scale because this data redundancy is degraded while it is important and it's really in the context of everything I have going within my fleet that I can use that to determine how important is this compared to everything else. So in today's presentation, we talked about the simplicity of SE Platform, the availability of SE Platform, and finally, the scalability of SE Platform. If you have additional questions about the product, please do reach out to us at scalecomputing.com. Thank you.